I'm just your average 16 year old with a love for video games, Fortnite being my poison of choice. School was a blur, a monotonous cycle of lectures and notes I barely paid attention to. Home was my sanctuary, where I could dive into the digital world and forget the dullness of reality. That day was different, though. It wasn't just any game of Fortnite. It was a special event, a match advertised with mysterious allure, promising an unparalleled prize for the victor. I'd entered on a whim, my expectations low. My gaming skills were decent, but winning was a shot in the dark. Yet, as fate would have it, I won. The rush of victory was intoxicating, the cheers of my online friends fueling my elation. But it was what came after that turned my world upside down. The following day, a package arrived. No return address, just my name scrawled across the top in bold black letters. My heart raced with anticipation as I tore it open, revealing its contents. A gaming headset. But this was no ordinary headset. Sleek black, with an eerie almost organic design, it seemed to pulsate with a life of its own. A note accompanied it, its message sending a chill down my spine. Were this for the ultimate gaming experience. Congratulations on your victory. Little did I know, that headset would be the beginning of my nightmare. Curiosity overpowered my initial apprehension. The headset, with its strange, almost hypnotic design, beckoned me. I remember thinking, what's the worst that could happen? Famous last words, right? I placed it over my ears, the soft padding enclosing me in a cocoon of isolation from the outside world. It was comfortable, unnaturally so. I booted up Fortnite, and the moment the game loaded, I knew something was different. The headset didn't just provide sound, it was as if it transported my very consciousness into the game. The colors were more vivid, the sounds crisper. I could feel the virtual grass under my feet, the sun on my virtual face. It was exhilarating, a level of immersion I had never experienced before. I played for hours, losing track of time, each victory more thrilling than the last. But then, things started to get weird. I began hearing whispers, faint and unintelligible, like secrets spoken in a language I couldn't understand. They followed me, lingering in the air long after I had taken off the headset. Shadows darted in the corners of my eyes, disappearing when I turned to look. I chalked it up to lack of sleep, to the overuse of the headset. But deep down, I knew it was more than that. The changes were subtle at first. A headache here, a bout of dizziness there. I shrugged them off, attributing them to the long hours spent gaming. But as the days passed, the symptoms worsened. My energy drained as if the headset was leeching my very life force. I became irritable, snapping at my parents over trivial matters, my mind constantly drifting back to the game. It was during one of these gaming marathons that I stumbled upon something chilling. A hidden file in the headset's interface, labeled do not open. Curiosity, again, got the better of me. I clicked it open, and what I saw made my blood run cold. Images of other players, their faces twisted in fear, pleading for help. Their eyes seemed to look right at me, begging for release. The whispers grew louder, more insistent. I ripped off the headset, my heart pounding in my chest, the echoes of those haunted faces burned into my mind. I should have stopped then. I should have thrown that cursed headset away. But I didn't. The game called to me, its siren song irresistible. And I, like a moth to a flame, couldn't stay away. I remember the night everything came to a head. It was stormy outside, the kind of storm that rattled the windows, and made the house creak. I was alone, my parents away for the weekend. The headset lay on my desk, its presence both menacing and inviting. I told myself it would be the last time, one final game to quell the growing unease in my mind. As I slipped the headset on, a sense of dread filled me. The game loaded, but it was different this time. The vibrant world of Fortnite had transformed into something dark and twisted. The sky was a sickly shade of green, the buildings decrepit and crumbling. And the silence, it was suffocating, broken only by the distant sound of thunder, both in the game and in reality. Then I saw them, the players from the hidden files. They were part of the game now, their avatars just as terrified as their real-life counterparts. They warned me, their voices urgent and fearful. The headset, they said, was a trap. It didn't just simulate the game, it trapped the consciousness of its users, turning them into prisoners of their own minds. Panic set in. I tried to remove the headset, but it clung to me, fused to my skin like a parasitic creature. I was trapped, forced to play this grotesque version of Fortnite. But it was no longer about building and shooting. It was survival, pure and simple. The other players, they weren't just avatars, they were real people, trapped like me. The game had become a twisted hunt. Shadowy figures roamed the map, their forms distorted and nightmarish, a far cry from the cartoonish enemies I was used to. The storm closed in, the eyes shrinking, pushing me closer to these abominations. I fought not just for victory, but for my sanity, the line between game and reality blurring with each passing second. The climax came in a flurry of terror and adrenaline. I was the last one standing, the storm closing in, the shadowy figures all around. In a moment of sheer desperation, I unleashed everything I had, the game responding in kind with a cacophony of sound and fury. And then, silence. The headset released its grip, and I was back in my room, the storm outside still raging. 
I was shaking, tears streaming down my face, the terror of what I had experienced raw and unyielding. The headset lay inert on the floor, its power seemingly spent. But the echoes of those trapped souls lingered in my mind, their pleas for help a haunting reminder of the nightmare I had just escaped. The aftermath of that night was a blur of confusion and terror. I sat there on the floor, my back against the bed, staring at the now inert headset. It looked so harmless, yet I knew the sinister truth it harbored. My mind raced, trying to process the nightmarish reality I had just escaped from. The storm outside had calmed, mirroring the eerie stillness that had settled in my room. I didn't sleep that night, or the nights that followed. The images of the trapped players haunted my every waking moment, their desperate faces imprinted behind my eyelids. I couldn't bring myself to touch the headset again, let alone dispose of it. Fear gripped me at the thought of someone else falling victim to his curse. My days became a cycle of paranoia and dread. I couldn't concentrate in school, the whispers of my classmates sounding like the eerie murmurs from the headset. My parents noticed the change in me, their concern growing with each passing day. But how could I explain it to them? How could I tell them that I had been trapped in a game, that others were still trapped, their consciousnesses ensnared by a piece of technology? I tried to warn others, posting about my experience online. But my warnings were met with skepticism and mockery. Who would believe such an outlandish tale? It sounded like the plot of a bad sci-fi movie, not something that could happen in real life. As days turned into weeks, the acute terror subsided, leaving in its wake a deep-seated unease. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, of being followed. Shadows seemed to linger a bit longer, and every electronic device in the house felt like a potential threat. The headset, now hidden in the depths of my closet, was a constant reminder of the horror I had endured, and the knowledge that it could still be out there, waiting for its next victim. The climax of my story had passed, but the scars it left were indelible, a constant reminder of the thin line between reality and the digital world. Life never really went back to normal after that. The headset, that cursed piece of technology, had changed me. I became withdrawn, a shell of my former self. My friends, the ones I used to spend hours gaming with, they didn't understand. They couldn't. How could they know the terror of being trapped in a nightmare, of fighting not just for a victory in a game, but for your very soul? I eventually gathered the courage to dispose of the headset, burying it deep in a landfill, hoping it would never be found. But the knowledge of what happened, of what could still be happening to others, haunted me. I warned as many people as I could, but my words often fell on deaf ears. It was just a game, they said. Just a story. My once beloved games now gathered dust, their allure lost to the horrors I had experienced. The lines between the digital world and reality had been blurred and crossed in ways I could never have imagined. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, of being a part of something far bigger and more sinister than a simple game. The story ends here, with me, a changed person, wary and cautious of the unseen dangers that lurk within our digital lives. But it doesn't really end, does it? Somewhere out there, another gamer is receiving a package, their heart racing with excitement as they unwrap their prize, oblivious to the nightmare that awaits them. The cycle continues, the game plays on, and the headset, the victory headset, finds its next victim. The shadows grow longer, the whispers louder, and the line between game and reality blurs once more. And all I can do is hope that my story, my warning, reaches someone before it's too late. For in the world of gaming, victory can come at a price far greater than we can imagine. A price paid not in points or rankings, but in the very essence of our being. And so, the nightmare lives on, somewhere out there, waiting, watching, for its next player to enter the game.